Well, hello, people. Welcome to um, 2023, January 2023. It's my least um, favourite month of the year. I'll explain why later. Um, I'm just out on a Sunday spin here. I had cabin fever at home, so I just decided to get out and uh, go for a spin. So I'm on the... Um, the road here is called the N33. It's a link road between the M1 motorway and a town called RD, which is in the smallest county in Ireland, in County Loud. So I'm driving in County Loud now, in the smallest county in Ireland. And um, yeah, I don't really know where I'm going. I'm just going on, 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 a, on a short enough spin, just to get out of the house, you know? So as I said, I hope you're all keeping well. I'm looking forward to 2023 and making more videos. And I don't know what's in store, like like us all really. Um, foreign holidays, I don't know where what I want to do yet. I have a few ideas in my head, all all right, but um, I haven't um, committed myself to anything just yet, you know. Right, I just I just seen a sign there for a place called Talonstown. <clears throat> so I'm, I'm sure it's just a probably a village in the country here, but uh, let's go up and have a look at this place called Talonstown, okay? village called Talonstown my friends. Blink your eyes or you'd miss it. Anyway, let's just I'll get out here and walk around. It's five degrees centigrade outside um, which is not too bad and um, I can see big dark clouds coming here. Um, we've been getting an awful lot of rain this month, an awful lot of rain here. Um, yeah so I'm going to go into this spar shop here so I'm going to go in and see can I get a cup of tea in here okay. Hang on there now. Right people, hello. I just had to get a cup of tea, a nice cup of tea here. Cheers, cheers. This is a pretty little village here called Talonstown. I'll have a little wander around now in a second. Look, I got these, they're, they're uh, tea cakes, you know. I got two of them, I got two of them, right? Now, if there was a box of them inside that shop there now, I would have bought them and scoffed the whole lot of them because I love these tea cakes, right? Um, yeah, so it's it's the 15th of January here. I just had to get out of the house. I, I was just cabin fever and this is my psychopath uh, month of the year. I, I, I don't be in a good place this time of the year because, um, sorry, but I'm going to eat this and talk at the same time. I know it's bad manners, but anyway. Oh! My God. Oh, you've no idea how fantastic these are. My God. Shit. Mmm. Oh. Yum, yum, yum. Pig's bum. Wow. Anyway.
Okay, now I'm going to finish this um, marshmallow here and then I'm just going to little wander around this town. Sorry people for the rant, but it's a time of year and it's called January. I hate it. Clouds sitting on your head. It's damp and it's cold and it's miserable and I just fucking hate it, okay? Mmm. But I never hate the marshmallow. Oh, look at that tea cake. Oh my God. That is so tasty, my friends. So, so tasty. Cheers. Right, let's have a little wander around Tallinnstown here. So this pub here is saying 1868. Now, that's part of it there, but that's new. I'm wondering, is that the original stonework on it there from 1868 and renovated if you know what I mean uh, lovely isn't it um, Loud Hall Manor Court Charter granted AD 1685 wow that's amazing amazing So that's called the River Glide there. And here's a farmer here in his Ford tractor, real old tractor, look. Probably from the, this tractor is probably from the 70s. Have a look at this. He's a friendly farmer anyway. And here's another place here called PJ Lennon and Sons. Another, another, another pub here. And look at this here. Uh, Rat Brist, AD 1857. So does that mean, geez, those houses don't look like they're going back to 1857, maybe they are. And there's that pub there called PJ Lennon and Sons. Okay, let's go back up into, in, into the, into the, into the center of this little village here. Have a look around. It's nice, isn't it? L love the lights here. Look at the lights over on the, on the walls of the bridge. Lovely. Right, there's a sculpture over here. So, of some guy, right? So let's go over and see who this guy was.
Right, so it's saying here V E R E, is that Ver or Very Foster, 1819 to 1900. Uh, very Henry Louise Foster can be regarded as one of the most remarkable and unifying figures in the history of post famine Ireland. He will be known to people of a certain age for his Ver Fosters those rectangular ruled workbooks used to teach generations of children to write by copying words and letters in a distinctive copper style, copper plate style. As such, it is Ver Foster who can claim the credit or, for that matter, the blame for how many of us write. However, his contribution to Irish life goes much deeper than that. He was born in Copenhagen, on April 25th, 1819. At this time, his father, a member of the Irish aristocracy, uh, whose family seat was at Glyde Court, Talonstown, was serving as British ambassador to Denmark. Ver had the conventional upbringing of the son of an aristocrat family. He attended Eton and Oxford, and on graduating, he followed his father into the diplomatic service and was posted to Rio de Janeiro and Montevideo. His promising career as a diplomat was short-lived, however, while returning to Ireland in 1847 to visit his relations in Glyde Court. It can be said that his life changed utterly. When in Ireland, he witnessed firsthand the indescribable suffering of the people as a result of the Great Famine. He immediately resigned his diplomatic position and decided to devote his life to the social improvement of the Irish poor, regardless of creed or politics. He established and personally funded emigration schemes aimed mostly at young girls in their 20s. The first group of 70 girls left Rada for the US via Liverpool in 1850. Over the next 10 years, he personally uh, financed the passage to America as many as 1,600 people at a cost of one thousand pounds between 1880 and 1884 he spent a further 27,000 perhaps the equivalent of four million in today's money helping more than 2,000 girls from Ireland to emigrate um, right I, I, I won't go on more about it but seems to be a very nice man well I'll go over I've read this here so as you can see here, there were Tidy Towns winners, national award winner in 2010, and they got a gold medal for it. And I can see why, because it's a lovely village. So it's saying here, Talonstown on the banks of the River Glyde is a picturesque village in the rolling heartlands of County Loud. This manorial village is situated north of RD and about 15 kilometers south of Dundalk its central location just off the M1 motorway and N2 Dublin Derry Road leaves it as an ideal location from which to explore the scenic Cooley, Cooley Peninsula to the north and the historic Bind Valley to the south. How Hi, you how you doing? So this was the original school here in Talonstown from um, 18, 1840 it's saying it's built. So this side here was the boys school, the male school and over there is the girls school. Lovely the way it's done. Look at the, the brickwork around the windows and the stone. Isn't it just gorgeous? I love it. Love it. Very, very good. The old windows. Lovely. Stonework is deadly. Look at that, the real tin. I love these real, real tin layered stones. Look, gorgeous. And here's a brilliant idea here. This is, this is just deadly. Look, this is an old phone box, right? And they've turned it into their local, um, a local library. Look, you see, so you can open it here. It's not locked. And then it, there's all the, the books inside. Very good. And um, there's the, the local church there, and there's a funeral on in there at the minute, so I won't go in there. Right, so let's go across the road here. So 
this is what it's like during the summertime. The gold, just look at that, the flowers. Yeah, I'd say this, this is a beautiful place now during the summertime, for definite. Look at that lovely house there, isn't it gorgeous? Nice stone wall along here. I don't know, one of them, it looks like a, a pump, you know? Can you just hear the boards? It was drizzle rain here at the minute. Look at that old um, Ford 4000 tractor. And you've got a log splitter on the back, so they're, they're splitting logs for the fire for the, for the winter, winter time. That tractor there, I'd say, is from the 1970s. Cool, isn't it? So you see all this stuff in villages like this all over Ireland. Oh, the village blacksmith. Okay, let's read this. It's a poem, is it? Under a spreading chestnut tree, the village smithy stands. The smith, a mighty man is he, with large and sinewy hands. And the muscles of his bravery arms are strong as iron bands. His hair is crisp and black and long. His face is like the tan. His brow is wet with honest sweat. He earns whatever he can and looks the whole world in the face, for he owns not any man. Week in, week out, from morn till night, you can hear his bellows blow. You can hear him swing his heavy sledge with measured beat and slow, like a sexton ringing in the, ringing the village bell when the evening sun is low. And children coming home from school look in at the open door. They love to see the flaming forge and hear the bellows roar and catch the burning sparks that fly like shaft from a trashing floor. He goes on Sunday to the church and sits among his boys. He hears the parson pray and preach. He hears his daughter's voice singing in the village choir and it makes his heart rejoice. It sounds to him like her mother's voice singing in paradise. He needs must think of her once more, how in the grave she lies. And with his hand, hard, rough hand, he wipes a tear out of his eyes. Tiling, rejoicing, sorrowing, onward through life he goes. Each morning sees some task begin, each evening sees it close. Something attempted, something done, has earned a night's repose. So, that's a guy called Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. Now, you didn't, didn't think... You shall come along for a spin with me and get a, a poem recital, did you? There you go now. Let's walk there. That's the local school now. That's the, the new, um, yeah. So that's their, that's their national school. And over there is uh, the church, the big, big church, you know. So, yeah. Um, So I'm kind of I'm kind of heading west here in in the village. So this is I'm almost at the at the, the edge of the village here now, west and on on the westward. And here's a nice little estate in here. Look, very very well kept. I have to say, there's a the school getting a gas supply. Wow. So, what stuff to compost? That's telling you all about stuff you can compost. How to make compost. Pollinator friendly plants for your garden. And top tips for a biodiverse garden. And five steps to reduce our waste and make Tannenstown a cleaner, greener village. Which it is, by the way, it is. That's an old stone wall for sure. It's lovely, isn't it? Look at, look, look at the way they, they built the stone wall around the tree. Look, it's like great. Love it, I love it. 
what's it say here? The chapel field. Oh yeah, that's cool. The chapel field. The gate could do with a bit of painting. Look, look at the rust on it. Actually, it could have been replaced. Look at it. That's an old gate. Notice in nature in Tallis Town, ecology. Um, Deadhead Hotel. Log piles are renowned for their ability to shelter wildlife. The piles, branches or logs offer protection and warmth for hibernating butterflies, ladybirds, lace wings and moths. It also offers shelter for frogs, wood lice, beetles, spiders and possibly if the hedge is wide enough, a hedgehog looking for a hibernation spot. The decomposing layers will also attract worms at the base of the dead hedge. The dead hedge is a great example of reusing discarded natural organic material. Well that's a cool little place in there for nature isn't it? Lovely. So they're calling that there the insect hotel. Right so as you can see, as I said, you only walk a couple of yards from the village and you're in the heart of the country. There's a farmer's huge big field here. Uh, I don't know what that is he has in there, but it's obviously feed for the for probably the cows for the winter time. Uh, look at this, caution, more hens crossing. So little, little more hen boards cross over here, obviously. Cool. So it's also saying here that Verb Foster, uh, sorry, situated as it is a mere three kilometres from Glide Court, Verb Foster's ancestral home, it was inevitable that Verb Foster played a major role in the building of the old school. As a tribute to the wonderful work of Verve, the school in Tallinstown was named after him and subsequently the new school, which was built in 1966, has retained his name. The only other school in Ireland named after Ver Foster is in Ballymorphy in Belfast. A small tribute to such a brilliant and generous philanthropist who dedicated his life to improving the lot of the underprivileged. Wow. So they also have a little garden here. Um, now here, here's people here from the 1916 Rising. I don't know why they have them here. I know, I'm not going to read a whole lot of it here, but all over here you have little plaques with, I think it's some of the people who died in the 1916 Rising. Uh, the, the, the people, I mean, who signed their name to the Declaration of Independence. Um, the pictures of them all over here, but I don't think they were they were from out here near near Talonstown, you know. But uh, yeah. Yeah, a lovely picturesque village for sure. I can see why it won a gold medal in 2016. Um, all Ireland gold medal for best kept village in Ireland. Um, and I'd say if you come down here in the spring and the summertime and the autumn, I'd say it'll be just fantastic because it's spotless clean here. It, it, it's beautiful, you know. So anyway, that's it from Talonstown, my friends. Look at the old uh, pump here, look. See, what you've done then was you put the handle of your bucket on that little lip here on the pump. And then you get the handle. And then you pump the handle like so. 
and you fill your bucket of water and bring it home to your house. They were all over Ireland before the water mains came into all, all the homes. You'd have uh, pumps like that in villages and towns and actually along country roads as well you'd have that, you know. So, um, a bit of a miserable day here my friends, a bit of a miserable day. But what do you expect for the month of January in Ireland my friends? people thanks for watching i hope you were entertained uh, by my little um, cabin fever drive i was just pissed off at home of the house and decided to go for a spin so uh yeah um stay tuned for more videos to come as usual i have no idea where i'll be next but it'll be from somewhere okay so stay tuned keep safe and i'll see you all again soon take care bye